soft, light, and full of banana flavor, this sour cream banana cake is the best cake recipe ever. Hi, Mindful Moms and Dads, Kristen here. As someone who suffers from a chronic disease, I believe homemade is best, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Whenever I ask my husband what he wants to eat, he says banana cake. Banana cake for breakfast, banana cake for lunch, banana cake for dinner. That man could eat banana cake every single day. And after decades of making it for him, it is well past time that I share my recipe with you. So let's put on our kitchen capes and make the most perfect banana cake. That happens to be not only my husband's favorite cake recipe, but everybody in my family loves it, and I know you're gonna love it too. It's really a super simple recipe. The first thing we're gonna do is preheat our oven to 350 degrees and grease a nine by 13 cake pan with either butter or cooking spray. We're gonna start our cake batter by creaming together our butter and sugar. To a large mixing bowl, place a half a cup or one stick of softened butter and one and a half cups of sugar. Now beat that together until it's light and fluffy and the butter is super creamy. To the butter mixture, add in two eggs. I'm also adding in one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And are you ready for it? One cup of sour cream. Sour cream is the secret to the best banana cake ever. Not only does the sour cream add moisture to the cake recipe, but the acidity from the sour cream also reacts with the baking soda to keep our cake super light and fluffy. Then we're just gonna mix that until combined. Now for the bananas, you wanna select bananas that are really ripe. If your bananas are underripe, this cake will not be as sweet and the banana flavor will not be as prominent. We need one cup of mashed banana, which is about three small bananas. You can certainly use bananas that you have frozen. Just be sure to defrost in the microwave before adding to your cake batter. And give that another good mix. Now for the dry ingredients, I have a fine mesh strainer over a large mixing bowl. I'm gonna add to that two cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, and a fourth a teaspoon of salt. We wanna sift that so that it'll help keep the cake light and fluffy, and it'll help prevent any clumps of baking soda, which can leave a really unpleasant taste in your mouth. Give that a quick mix just to make sure everything is fully incorporated. And then we're gonna add our flour mixture to our butter and sugar mixture. Gently fold together until there are no more flour pockets. As with any baked good, be careful to not over mix your batter or you'll have a tough, dry cake. Transfer this batter to your nine by 13 cake pan, and then we're gonna pop it into our preheated oven. For the bake time, it's going to vary between 25 minutes and 35 minutes. And I know that's a big discrepancy in time. However, every oven is different. For me, I find 30 minutes is the sweet spot, but I like to check it at 25 minutes. At 25 minutes, if my cake is still jiggly in the center, I set it for another five minutes and check it again. If the cake appears set, pop a toothpick into your cake batter and make sure that it comes out dry. Remove your cake from the oven once baked and let it cool completely before icing. But I'm gonna use that time that it cools to whip up a cream cheese frosting. In a large mixing bowl, you wanna combine one stick or a half a cup of softened unsalted butter with eight ounces or one brick of softened cream cheese. Beat together until creamy and smooth. Add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract and one tablespoon of milk and beat again. Add in two and a half cups of powdered sugar and then to mix again, make sure you start on low speed or you'll have powdered sugar going everywhere all over your kitchen. Once the powdered sugar is incorporated, you can turn up the speed and beat until it's light and fluffy. As for the consistency, we're looking for a thicker frosting, but one that still spreads easily. You can add in a half a tablespoon of milk at a time and a half a cup additional powdered sugar at a time if needed until the right consistency is reached. Once our cake is fully cooled, spread with a thick layer of this frosting. And if you can resist, I highly recommend that you cover this cake and pop it in the fridge for 24 hours. It tastes best after it's been refrigerated and it'll last in the fridge for up to three days, if you can resist. And if I pair this banana cake with a burger, you can guarantee my husband's in a little bit of heaven. And you can catch how I make the perfect burger in my next video. See you there.